leveling up, elevating, and living our absolute best lives. So today's video is a little bit different. It's in collaboration with Kuchenda um, by Faye Kakai. And um, we're, she reached out to me to do this video. I thought it was a brilliant idea. And it's just basically sharing our experiences about being black outside of Africa. Um, I've always talked about this. I'm not shy to talk about it. I just don't talk about it often. So I figured this would be a great opportunity to really sh um, share my experience. Um, so definitely check out her channel and her video also um, after you watch this one. So I guess let's start from like my childhood. So obviously I think some of you know that I wasn't born in um, Canada, um, but I was born in Sweden. So I don't remember like that part of my life, but due to that, we ended up obviously being immigrants to Canada. So I think that kind of changed my experience a little bit about being black in Canada. My perspective was really from an immigrant perspective. Um, so obviously, <laughs> Um, growing up, you get the few comments from kids about like your food smelling you know, different or kind of off. That's like me putting it in a nice way. Um, even though at the time I went to school in Toronto, in like the hood, and literally uh, kids were from like all different types of backgrounds and places, but it was a, a predominantly Italian Catholic school um, by like. Keel and Finch, Jane and Finch area. So I guess because of that, um, I don't know, kids just felt the need to like pick on other kids, even though there were a lot of black kids in the school. But I still grew up with a lot of different types of black people. Like I had very close Somalian friends, I had very close Jamaican friends, um, I'm Ugandan. So like I still had a really good experience knowing and seeing all different types of people. I still had Asian friends and white friends and whatever too, but I just wanted to specify that to lead into my next point. So then around the age of 9 or 10, we moved to the suburbs and like white suburbia, literally. So we were like, me and my sister are the only black kids, stuff like that. So I feel like at that point I dealt with a lot more racism, but I had such a deep connection with fellow black people that I don't think racism bugged me that much as a kid growing up. Partly partly because of like being like naive and so innocent, but also partly because it's like I expected it. <laughs> it was like, I mean, what else was I gonna get from people? You know what I mean? Like what else, what other treatment was I gonna get? Like it didn't matter. So I think, like I'm literally having a revelation right now because it's now making a lot of sense. So consequently growing up, it hurt me a lot more dealing with discrimination and colorism from people who looked like me than people who, than racism from people who didn't. Like it was just kind of like, ugh, I, I, I expect that. Like I don't expect anything more from you people. But people who looked like me, I was like, what do you mean? Like we've been pals our whole, my whole life. We've been, we've been a crew. We've always understood each other. Then I go into high school and people literally it's like high school is when I found out that I was considered dark skin. Before that, I just thought there were different shades of black people. Who cared? There was probably a, the same amount of all the different types of black people. Like it didn't affect me. It didn't. I didn't really care. I guess as a kid, like not that I didn't care. I just didn't see it. So I grew up in also a very. Uh, I wouldn't say big. It's small as hell. But to me, in my world, it was big. I have a lot of Ugandans in the Toronto area. So my church with all my friends and like it's not like we sat there comparing each other's shades like I literally looked at everyone and was like you all look like me we all look the same no one to me seemed any different because they were lighter or they were darker like I literally was like we're all the same people so yeah so then high school I uh, met our crew of guy friends like I had my core crew of Ugandan girls and to me even in my eyes we were all the same shade like at that point I still didn't get it I was like we're all the same Shade and nobody was fighting against us about this and nothing like I don't even know if they were aware maybe but I don't know um and I, I've always like looked at my mom and I was like she's slightly lighter than me like I, I could see that but it's not something that I sat and pondered like you know what I mean I was like my mom is beautiful and her skin is beautiful and I look like her <laughs> nothing of that was like shades like to me so anyways um, I end up in high school meet guy friends and that was like my first reality that I was considered dark and like my things that perplex, actually funny enough, things that perplex people in Africa 
now are things that were pointed out to me when I was like 14, 13, 14, 15. At that point, I was just kind of like, why does this matter to you? So like I'll be sitting there and a guy's like, one of our guy friends is just like, oh, your knuckles are darker or your knees are darker. And I was like, and? <laughs> like, I don't understand how this is supposed to affect me. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm black. Um, but it got to a point where I started to question it because I would hear it regularly. So then I was like, oh, okay, so like I'm darker or like they, and it's funny because this is coming from guys who literally were the same shade as me. When I say self-hate runs deep, self-hate runs well from deep, like real deep. So due to that, um, it was just kind of weird. It's, it's like they transferred their insecurities onto me. And I remember just being at like parties or stuff and like they would do things like comparing shades and it literally started to get to me. And, is that hurt me more than if a white person came to my face and said nigger to my face or like something crazy like to me that was like i don't expect less i don't expect anything more from the, those people i was like whatever but i did expect more from people who looked like me anyways the point of this video i don't want it to be like a black on black whatever that's it's not my point i just was saying that my experience with colorism ran hella deep so it took a lot of years and everything to be able to deal with and to rinse all of that out um i'm sure there's still effects of it to this day but um at the moment i feel like i'm in a good place <laughs> but growing up in a white town i would get a lot of ignorant comments you have to be very specific or sorry, very careful of how you define ignorant. Like ignorant as in children coming to me asking me questions that they really don't know any better because they probably got it on television. Like innocence, ignorance, you know, not like you should know better, you're a dumbass, you're arrogant. Actual ignorant ignorance. So just just really random questions, ask, just assuming where I'm from, or assuming because I look a certain way that I have to act a certain way, being called or said that I act white or I sound white. Um, I actually get that a lot in Africa too, which is kind of funny, but it, it's coming from, I get it, it's coming from a prep place of um, like suppression due to colonialism and them and people in like Africa who hear me and want you to sound like me because people will make fun of me and then in the same breath be like, so how do I say that word again? Like they'll want to say it a specific way. So to me, I'm like, no, like you sound beautiful. Like if anything, I want to sound like you so people can understand me more. So don't ever think you need to sound like me. Um, and then on the other flip side, um, whereas in North America, it was coming from a place of hella 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 like society just telling you're supposed to be something different it's still the same it's still like from a place of suppression but it was to say that they're better than me like oh i'm more i i've heard this too but from people being like oh well i'm more black than you meanwhile they're white i'm more black than you because i sound this way because i watch their television shows or because i'm into certain artists or whatever and i'm literally looking at them like pardon I also remember, <laughs> I think I was in grade seven at this guy, he was so weird, bless his heart, don't know where he ended up in life, hope it was somewhere well, but he was like what people would call like trailer, like just, you're just from not the best circumstances, you're like a trailer trash boy. I don't want to be rude, but that's the only way that I can put it for you guys to understand. Um, anyway, I, he would call like his thing was to channel Eminem in like a bad way. Like he really and truly psychologically thought he was black. This man was psychotic. Or boy was psychotic. He wasn't a man, he was a boy. But um, we were like 13 or whatever. And I remember once being in class and he literally put his arm beside my arm. My arm was there on like a table. I'm just doing my work because I was a good student. And he's just there with his dumb ass, bad ass puts his arm beside me and he's like, look, we're almost the same shade. I'm like, you didn't shower. Like, what do you mean? You didn't even tear. You just like are trying to find a way to look black, but like, it's not working. I'm like, go shower. Like literally that's what it was. It was just like, he had a film or something. It was disgusting. And to me, I'm just like, get your nasty arm off my desk. <laughs> You're a freak. <laughs> but at the time, everybody wanted a part of black culture everyone wanted to be in black culture and with kids which is also not the greatest thing is it's a place of innocence but 
if they're not taught properly by adults, that can manifest into some other crazy thing, an appropriation or whatever. Like bad Barbie, actually, now that they think about it. But she had the power, this guy had the power. <laughs> he was just sitting there at the desk next to me or something. But um, yeah, so that, those experiences, I feel like, were specific to being black um, outside of Africa, personally to me, because there's a lot of things that now that I'm in Africa, like, you don't even think of, like, you don't even have to fight about, like, I know colorism is prevalent, is here, but I don't think it's, a, it's as prevalent as the West. People in the West suffer for their skin color, but you come here and I'm like, every other person. It's like when I lived in Toronto with all my beautiful friends and my little African friends I'd run around with, or Jamaican friends, Caribbean friends, and all their different skin tones. And like that's how it is here, but like my color is a norm. It's not something that I feel like I'm defensive or I have to be like, oh, this is something I have to notice. So I did do appreciate that part of it. being in Africa versus being outside of Africa. Colorism will hit you as a dark skinned woman, especially, because I think with dark skinned men, you're more fetish, fetish, fetishized, fetishized. Do I know the word? Fet fetishized, which is not a good thing either, but you can get more places than a black woman with the same skin tone as you do. Like, we're not here. Like, they're a little bit more here. They're like idolized, which is so messed up in its own way, but whatever. There's more opportunities for y'all. Um, but to put this on more of like a positive note, my experience with being black or African outside of Af Africa, specifically African, especially now that everyone said, finally figured out that we're actually dope, um, has been pleasant as an adult. Um, it's been very interesting, even just the differences between black Americans or Black North Americans or Caribbean North Americans and African North Americans. And it's been a beautiful thing. It's been a place of educating and being educated. And it's been really, really, really cool. But I personally loved it now as an adult, but I live in Africa now. But growing up in Africa, or sorry, growing up in North America, now that I look at it in hindsight, I think it was like a special thing and a beautiful thing. I just remember even being as a, a kid and in Toronto, like I, I, because of the school that I went to, we had uh, like ethnic, ethnic days or like, that's not what they were called, but they actually had these, I think they were like cultural days. And I'd go with my little cute suti and I'd have my mandazi and I'm like, I'm here! And I'm like in grade one with my hair all done up. My mom just helped me, bless her heart because she hates cooking, but she made the mandazis for me. And like that was really, really dope. So. Personally, my experience as a kid, I would never change it for the world, and I'm glad I grew up in Toronto specifically as a child. And then I'm glad I had that experience as weird as it was being in high school um, amongst black and white people, and just being like, no, like I, I'm Ugandan and I love it, and I love my culture, and I wouldn't change it, and just growing into my own and having to also accept my skin color too. A lot of things that like, all these things you just wouldn't experience if you were living in Africa as much. I can't speak on that because I didn't grow up in Africa as a kid, but I just feel like you're all Ugandan when you're in Uganda, or you're all Nigerian, or you're all Kenyan in those countries, generally speaking, and if you're different or an other, you're still not, it's not like you have to kind of like defend yourself as much. Um, but growing up, I, I think it was beautiful and it brought a lot to the conversation and conversations that I have. And now there's a whole crew of people who grew up in Newburgh, Ontario, who now just by force no randomness about Uganda because it's like you just know five Ugandan girls who are a crew and it's like you wanted to hang with us by default. You probably ate a chapati, you probably had Mendazi, you probably, you know, are in uni, you probably heard a Ugandan song and you probably never would have if you did it. Had it hadn't had met me. It also had its beauty in itself as well, and I did appreciate that. So yeah, it was a very interesting experience. Um, uh, I know that my kids are gonna grow up here, but they'll still have their exposure in North America because that's where my family predominantly, is, like my direct family is. And it'll be great having that conversation with them. Like, how do you feel? How did it shape you? Uh, do you have regrets? Do you not? But personally speaking, I loved the way I grew up, and I'm gonna change it for the world. So yeah, that was my experience about growing up black slash African outside of Africa. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do remember 
to check out the other video on her channel and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hers and I will see you